There's a sequence of photographs of me. I was in Libya recording the Libyan revolution. I was injured uh, a couple of times and the second time I was injured, I took a, um, a handful of selfie images. I was in an ambulance and I was, I was bleeding and I was, it was like this, you know, a realization that not being sure if I was going to live or not. My life at that point, everything was, was oriented around photographing everything around me. It really helped me shift uh, the way that I work. The phrase I used is that I was used by photography. And then after, I began to make choices that you know, were based from me and what I want. I have a daughter, but I would still, if I felt that I was as a photographer, as a documentarian, if I was in a situation again in which I felt like I was really creating imagery that it was, was important, that I could only uh, uniquely make, then I would do it. You would die for it, not necessarily physically, but just like what, what, what is worth sacrificing your time for and your existence for. Photography has helped me um, realize who I am. My name is Michael Christopher Brown and I am a photographer and an artist. Yeah, I've been a photographer for 25 years professionally. I've worked with um, a number of agencies uh, such as Grazie Nere, Magnum, Corbis. I've been a Nat Geo photographer since 2004. Freelance for mostly editorial clients, though more and more I'm doing advertising work. So I'm from uh, the Skagit Valley, which is a farming community in Washington State in the Northwest. And um, I learned photography from my dad who had a dark room in the house, and so photography was always a was always a hobby for me growing up. I had a speech impediment when I was younger, and so I would avoid speaking. And photography was one of the ways in which I could express uh, myself. Photojournalism, I saw, was like was a way that I could make money. I knew that I could do it, but my inspiration from the very beginning was was always like you know the bigger picture, which was the power of imagery to shape stories of our time. Yes, I'm a photographer, but really I'm a connector. I'm trying to connect people. This for me is like one of my primary motivations. This goes back into when I was a kid. You know, my dad was a physician and he would work a lot overseas in orphanages. And he would photograph while he was there and come back and he would show the photographs to our family, but also our community. From a young age, my parents really tried to expose my sister and I to the world beyond. You know, the author, the storyteller, the photographer who is really looking for that connection, looking for some, some truth. It's like this process of going to find something. You see things along the way that are interesting, but you know that you're looking for something. You don't always know what it is, but then life will reveal itself. That process and the magic of life is always there. You know, the powerful imagery that like shows that connection will always, will always have currency. The magic of working with film in the darkroom, you don't know what you're getting. And with AI, there's this, this interaction and collaboration with the machine. It is a true collaboration in the sense you are using language to create imagery. So depending on how the machine sees the words that you use and the placement of those words, it can completely change the imagery. The AI begins to see what you're drawn to as a creator. So there's this really interesting sort of cross meshing of, of understanding. So there's a magic in that that's really exciting. I think it's really amazing that machines can create photographic looking imagery that is believable. I'm always limited by space and time. I have to be at a place at a certain time where I'm gonna miss the picture. But I've accumulated a list of stories and ideas from just years of being in the field, stories that, that I wanted to photograph, but I couldn't. People generally want to have their voice heard. They don't want to be voiceless, but they often want to be faceless. While working in Cuba, I worked on a few different projects, and one of the projects that I wanted to photograph that I couldn't was this, um, the story of Cubans coming to the United States. They're fleeing in watercraft that they make from old cars or lawnmower engines, uh, pieces of metal and plastic. 
So this is a story that I never got access to because of just, you know, the nature of the story. People escaping from their country, they don't want to be documented. <laughs> While I was in Cuba, I, you know, spoke with my Cuban friends and, and I sort of outlined a journey. I created a story using AI that is sort of this general overview of the Cuban situation. So when everything is created, everything is uh, generated. I mean, of course, we, we need to have a way to somehow verify that a photograph is real and to sort of place a stamp on an image if it's real or if it's not real. The way that I look at it, of course, at the end of the day, if I could have photographed it, that for me is ideal. That would also entail me going back through Cuban history. So, so time traveling into the time when Fidel came into power and all these historical events and living through all that. The still photograph has a power as a uh, creative medium that is of course unique. It's why photography stands alone. And there's a real power in the still photograph and you're holding time. And so you're holding it in some way like, you know, this is real, this existed. With AI, we're illustrating. It's not real, so it's fake. What's the value in it? For me, my head always goes to like, well, what's the value of any art that was made in the past, you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of years? We're illustrating, we're making art, but what's important is the message that we're trying to communicate. And that's part of the, the strength, I think, in the, with 90 Miles, the Cuba AI work I made, is that this is a reminder. This is not real imagery. This is just a reminder of what is happening. Yeah, the power of the still photograph is amazing. It's so exciting for me. I wish I had more time that I, that I, could, that I could spend making it, but I'm using AI as a great way that I can, as an artist, express ideas about the world. It is a kind of a cleanup for the things that I can't actually photograph. It's like a way for me to still, still collect them, and still, still capture them as an artist. When I was younger, I was more focused on working for certain, for certain clients or like having a certain label behind my name. I was more obsessed with sort of the appearance of things. Now I'm much more interested in content. And I think content is, content is vision. It's not just making things but it's like making things with intention of passion and true belief. Focus on what you really care about and what you love and what you're passionate about.